The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, can everyone hear me okay? If so, type yes in the questions box, please. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, I'm Felissa. I'm the community manager for Nothing Australia. Um, and uh, well, thanks everyone for coming. I'm really excited about this. Um, this is the first webinar that Nothing has done in quite a while, and it's the first ever webinar that we have done in partnership with Health of Aid, and we are very excited to about this today. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to say um, thank you for all of you bloggers who are here with us. Um, I know how busy you are, but I really appreciate you coming in. I think you'll get a lot out of this awesome presentation. Um, today on the webinar, I've got uh, two very special guests, um, Kathy Malocco and the highly acclaimed U.S. blogger Jessica Gottlieb. Um, some of you might have met Kathy last year at Blogopolis. She attended our um, she's widely known as a personality marker, so she helps people get their brands. Um, and uh, Jessica will be speaking to you about how it is that she's grown to be such a massive blogger with um, about a million views every month on her on her site, in spite of the fact that she never wanted to be a blogger at all. Um, if you've got any questions throughout this presentation, we'd love to hear them. Um, just enter them as we go in the questions box, and we'll be doing a full Q and A at the end. So. Um, questions, comments, concerns, just fire away and we'll, um, we'll address them as needed. Um, Kathy, uh, pass it over to you. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be with you today and, and thank you to Nafnang for inviting your community to be part of this presentation. Um, just a quick um, snapshot of what Health Abate's about. It's coming up on March the 2nd in Sydney. We've got over 20 leading bloggers speaking, um, so that'll be really exciting and we're really excited to have Macro um, uh, only available at Woolworths as our leading sponsor. Um, unless I get you to move on to the next slide if you don't mind. Um, the difference with Health of Eight from other blogger conferences that I've been to is we're actually going to break it out into two streams. So we want bloggers to have access to the leading opinion makers and the leading um, academics on various health issues. So we'll be talking about mental health, we'll be talking about bullying in, in our schools and a whole range of health education issues. And then of course we'll have um, a professional blogger development area in the area of health. The themes that we will follow will be eating well, living well, in other words living life to its fullest and giving to others. So it's all about the power of us as bloggers and about changing the story where it needs to change. And at that point, I think I'll, I might hand over to Jessica and welcome her. Thank you so much for making yourself available and to, to talk to our community. We're really excited that you're coming down under. Um, over the last couple of months, I've got to know Jessica via email and Skype, and she was telling me the other day that uh, she actually did a science degree. Um, um, mostly because she didn't like to write, so it's quite ironic now that she's one of the world's leading bloggers. She uses the word mum blogger similar to the way we talk about it, tongue in cheek, but I'm sure she'll tell you, tell you her story. So over to you Jessica and welcome. Oh, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, I'll just go ahead and follow this slide here. Uh, the dream life of pro blogger means that I'm spending more hours a day in my pajamas than most. Um, not true. Uh, blogging is really interesting uh, for me because what it, I've been able to do is kind of slip it into my life as opposed to having a life that revolves around a career. And the, the reason I think that I've embraced the title mom blogger is that it's allowed me to put my motherhood first and to be able to participate in my life fully and, and just kind of get paid to live it. I started blogging several years ago. I, um, I walked into a hospital room where my friend was dying of AIDS and, and here in the States insurance and paperwork and I, I, I don't know what healthcare is like in Australia but in the States it's unkind to people quite often and his, he's a gay man and his partner looked at me and the doctor looked at me and they said, there's Stephen's sister. 
she said, what, what are you talking about? Uh, okay, I'm his sister. And I became the next of kin because Stephen and his partner weren't married and his partner had no rights to sign any papers. And, and so I was plunged into this incredibly surreal space and I had two young kids and every night after I would put them to bed I would go visit the hospital and then I would go bring my kids to school in the morning and my girlfriends would say to me, how are you? And I would tell them actually how I was and start sobbing. <laughs> and then people were like, whoa, back off the crazy lady. So I, um, I started blogging and I started writing about this experience because my real life community and my people, my feet on the ground that were next to me, this was too much for them to bear. It was too much sadness and it was too much crying, frankly, for me and for everybody else. And so I started this little tiny blog and, and I had a very intimate group of people that gathered around me that gave me incredible information, pointed me to wonderful resources, showed me where the support was that I would need, how to fill out forms, and how to be present when somebody was dying. And that that community, um, I, I, was, I was writing anonymously, my name was never on it. And then several years later, I, I deleted everything from that blog except for the parts about Stephen dying because I couldn't erase that chapter in my life. And, and I've brought them with me. So I sort of started in this sort of health place. And it, 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 it did a lot for me. It did a lot for my family. It, it, gave, me, it gave me little pieces of sanity. Currently, when people ask me what I do for a living, sometimes I'm just like, eh, I'm in tech. Because as a blogger, I'm sure that you guys understand, it's really hard to explain that you're a blogger. Because the follow-up question is always like, if I say, oh, I'm a blogger, they go, oh, can you make a living doing that? And they're like, no, you, you didn't ask me my hobby. You asked me what I do for a living. So now I just go, oh, I'm in tech. It's hard to explain. And, and people leave it at that because they're bored by it. But then sometimes I'll say to them, oh, I'm a blogger, and they'll say, well, what do you blog about? And I say, I blog about everything that you talk about at a dinner party after your second drink. <laughs> because my audience expects candor, my audience expects the truth from me, um, and my audience expects to have those conversations that you can't always have in polite company. And I'm willing, personally, to push those limits on my site. And it's not every single post, but I, I am comfortable with that. But even with that, there's, there's, you know, everybody has limits. My limits are just a little bit further on, on some things. I'm perfectly happy to talk about reproductive issues, I would say. Um, and my audience is really interesting. I think that since I started, uh, I started with a site that talked about AIDS a lot and the impact of AIDS and the perils of not having uh, legalized gay unions that um, I have a large gay male following. And um, so I, I probably have more men than most mom bloggers as part of their community and I I really enjoy that. I like that I have a lot of diversity in my community. And then I, I periodically get um, like private messages. I never get comments from them, but I get emails from men that are like, you're a mommy blogger, but you're my guilty pleasure. Thank you so much for writing this, that, or the other. And they feel like that they've kind of eavesdropped in on their wives, which uh, I think is kind of healthy for relationships. I like thinking that my husband, you know, might watch a TV show that's really geared for women and think about how, you know, maybe we talk to each other. Going through to clout is interesting. Um, I think clout is, is the big one, and, and by way of disclosure, I do a little bit of work with them, but um, the, the clout and cred do a lot of measurement around Twitter and Facebook, and they um, the scores kind of mirror each other. They just measure engagement. I don't know. I 
there there are some there are some big issues with it. Um, I there's a lady here called um, I, Liz Strauss, and she was the founder of a conference called SobCon, and she didn't have any clout on SobCon, which was the conference that she had created. So I think that all of these metrics that we use, we have to use them sort of gingerly. Uh, but if I look at clout, a clout score, and somebody has a clout score of 72 and somebody else has a clout score of 79, I kind of look at them as having the same influence. I just see overall that there's an engagement there. If I see that somebody has a clout score in the 20s, I'm like, oh, okay, so they're more of a listener than somebody who shares a lot of content. Uh, but I use that as one of many measures to uh, to, to see how um, people are interacting. And you can see it mostly measures Twitter and Facebook. I know that they've incorporated Instagram, but I'm, I still see that it's measuring mostly those two. Um, my typical day, uh, my typical day when my kids are in school is really easy. Um, I bring my kids to school and then I exercise because that's uh, a critical part of my day. When I don't exercise, I'm not a lovely woman to be around. Uh, and then after that, I sit down and I write for three hours. And, and as Kathy mentioned, I don't love writing. I find it to be uh, almost painful. I, I, I did, uh, after my first year of college, I was like, I... I don't know how I'm going to get through this if I have to write papers. So I went into the sciences and I managed to get through college the last three years of it with only writing, I think, one paper. And that was like a huge victory. I could have spent my whole time in labs and just been thrilled. So um, the, it's just a, a cruel joke that my career revolves around sitting and writing. But um, I go through my emails, I, I hit delete on a couple hundred emails. I find that my inbox is my biggest dilemma. Um, it's the biggest part of, of blogging that I, that's unresolved for me. Uh, I try and write a post, I try and write some proposals, I try and follow up with some people. And then I try and get out of the house and live my life so that I have something to talk about the next day. And this is really important, and I think that it's a mistake that a lot of bloggers make and that I can slip into. And it's not just blogging. It's just any sort of self-employment where you're just like, oh, okay, well, if I work two hours and I make $2, I should work four hours and make $4. Well, you hit a point of diminishing returns. You know, it's like get your work done, work hard, nose down, move on. Um, I've had tremendous, tremendous opportunities, not the least of which is coming to Australia um, shortly. It's just a few weeks away, really. Uh, but I got, this is really funny. So um, I was like saying to you guys that I, the first thing I do is just delete a whole bunch of emails. Emails are, I am on every wacky email list that makes no sense whatsoever. I get emails about baby spoons. My baby is in middle school. It, you know, he's 11. Um, I don't care about baby spoons. I also get, after sometimes after I get um, a couple of emails, I'll get a follow-up phone call. And I also get a lot of phone calls from the movie studios because I'm in Los Angeles and the TV studios. And they're like, the phone calls are awkward. They're like, hi. This is Jody from The Mommy Show, and we were hoping you would want to tell your readers about our mommy show. And it's just like, like I feel so badly for these people that have to sit on the phone, and, and they know that I don't want to hear from them, and I know I don't want to hear from them, but somebody had the brilliant idea for them to call. So I get this phone call, and it just starts in with, hi, this is Chelsea Marshall, and I'm calling from... Um, own the Oprah Winfrey Network, and I am tuning it out completely. I, I, I hear her talking, but I'm like doing dishes. And then I hear her say, and we'd like you to come with us to New York, and, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, can you start again? I think we had a bad connection. We had a fine connection. I just wasn't listening. So, of course, I basically almost hung up on the opportunity 
to travel to three different states with Oprah Winfrey and her crew and cover her new life show, which was absolutely extraordinary. Um, I, I, you don't have to be an Oprah watcher, viewer, or fan in order to recognize that this is a woman who came not from privilege, from complete bootstrap, looked at media, said, oh, that doesn't actually work for me. I think I'm going to do it my way, which is exactly what we're all trying to do as bloggers. And she created an empire out of Chicago in like a building that's tilted. I mean, it's, it's crazy what she was able to do just because she decided that there was a better way to do things and she was going to make that happen. And it was an absolute privilege to sit and talk to her. Um, and I'll probably talk more about it because she, she had some really, really interesting stuff to say about social media. But I was able to, um, you know, get behind the scenes with her, um, spend some time with her, work with her production staff and her marketing teams about, you know, how best to move their shows forward. And that was incredible. Um, I've also... Oh, I've been a million places that have been just incredible, and they've all beca been because of social. And and some of those million places are right in my backyard. It's just being in the company of of folks who I know are much smarter than um, than I could ever hope to be, and I just love that. On the brand side of things, I'm not sure exactly how everyone's monetizing their blogs or if they are I um, I vary on this from time to time I there's I have some tools that I use where different people see different advertisements based on how they came to my site people who just type my name in and come to my site without going through Google or Yahoo and just type in jessicagottlieb.com have an ad free experience because that's my community so I treat them really differently but um, the way that brands find me is I have made myself so accessible. My phone number, my address, my email address are everywhere. I want to be found. I am I am absolutely not hiding. I don't you don't have to fill out a form. You just can call my cell phone. It's pretty easy. Um, but if, if you want brands if you want brands to work with you, you have to make sure that there are brands that will never work with you. Um, if you plan to work with an organic grocery store, uh, you'd better never work with McDonald's because you've just lost all your credibility. If you want to charge $100 for something, that means that you can never work for $80. So um, my experience with how, how to work with brands has been you have to make sure that there are things that you won't do and wait for the right opportunities and be patient and be willing to wait and not sell out to the lowest bidder or the earliest bidder. Uh, and by in doing that too, the thing is, is like there has to be a respect with your community before there's a brand. And the brand has to be aware of that, that, that in the hierarchy of things, that your community, that your readership is actually, even though, even though anything, even though the brand is coming to you with the money, unless that's the last money you ever hope to get, they all still have to respect the reader first. Because the first time that I try and sell you guys anything that I wouldn't, really 100% be able to believe in, that's the last check I get ever. And so there is this real compatibility issue that's really, really tricky. But the brands are finally understanding that that's really good for them too. So I think that that's less of a struggle than it was several years ago. Um, I could not limit myself to five benefits of being a, a, a pro blogger. This is the perfect lifestyle for me in this moment of my life. I haven't missed I haven't missed any time with my kids. I haven't missed time with my husband. Um, and I haven't stopped learning. 
because the thing for me that that was really really hard about saying oh you know I'm gonna be a stay-at-home mom which I loved doing and I still do and I but I I loved that I was there for every first and stuff but like listen my kids are in school during the day um, this is the only career that I can think of where I could just say hey listen I'm just not gonna be here for a week and 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 y'all are just gonna have to be okay with that and where people are okay with that and where um, it, you know, I can do my work at nine o'clock in the morning, or at nine o'clock at night, or at two in the afternoon, and it's okay. Or it can be remote. My office can basically exist. You know, I have um the tablet, the Surface tablet. It's like that's it. I'm good. That's the that's my office, and it fits in my purse. So I I cannot cannot say enough about uh, the freedom that it's offered me and my family. Uh, I think I had everything here. You know what else um, too is I I love that people measure their feeds and and their email lists. If I could go back in time, that would be something I would concentrate on much much more. But I don't. I'm really really um, flawed over there in that area, and I'm still learning. So I just will learn from everybody here. And we can open up for questions if you like, or okay. I might just jump in if that's okay. And Jessica, Absolutely. you were going to mention about um, Claire, who's the another speaker coming to health health event. You know yeah. her personally. I do. Okay. Oh, Claire is fabulous. Claire is um, probably one of the smartest people I know. Actually, she falls into that category of oh my god, I cannot believe I'm surrounded by women like this. And Claire runs uh, something at Twitter. Um, Head of Social Innovation. Social Innovation. So she does, she works with a lot of the nonprofits and stuff. But she was like, she's the woman who brought the Pope to Twitter. So when you, you know, recently saw this big thing about the Pope coming to Twitter, this was not a small decision. And who is over there but Claire, you know, perky little Claire. <laughs> had worked for years to explain to the Catholic Church the benefit of this sort of outreach and coordinated it in many many languages over many many countries and as he was sending his first tweets there she was standing right next to him and Claire is um, where I'm my flaw is not building my email list Claire is not good at bragging about herself so I'll have to do it for her <laughs> but she's actually written a fabulous book um, about best uses for Twitter too that would would be extraordinarily helpful for anybody um, and it's uh, something good uh, on Twitter we'll we can share that um, Yeah, she's and she's she's a listener and a lifelong learner. And I think too that that bloggers and the most successful people in social um, tend to be these sort of lifelong learners and people who are always growing and changing. So, do we have some questions? Vanessa, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, now. Okay, sorry, I had myself muted. Um, okay, we've got quite a few questions coming in. Um, everyone who is on the webinar, um, again, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask Jessica or Kathy or about Health of Eight or blogging in general, um, just add those in to the questions panel on your um, GoToWebinar control panel, um, and we'll go through those now. Um, we're getting a lot of questions, Jessica, about how you first started with blogging, um, not necessarily what made you initially get on a computer and do it, but at what point did your blog take off? How did you get traffic? Um, what, what is the connection between where you started off with and how you got to be where you are now? Um, boy, I, that, 
that would take about three hours to answer, but I, I did start, <laughs> I did just start on the blogger platform, and after that I moved to WordPress, and then I, I moved to using, you know, paid WordPress on, on just my own back end. It is, at what point? Sorry, go uh, ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a process of, you know, there's, there's many prongs for gathering your, your traffic. Um, so, you know, in the earliest stages, it was just straight community. That's all it was. It was one-on-one, -on -one and it was me really needing the, my readers as much as my readers were interested in reading me. And then uh, moving forward, uh, you know, once you accumulate a body of work, search becomes more and more important. Um, so, so there's quite a bit of that. And then you are kind of in the business of promoting yourself. So I, I do this in bits and spurts, but I, I do a lot of TV. Um, I would get myself in the newspaper quite a bit, um, you know, and, and present yourself as an expert in whatever it is you are expert in. Now, at what point in that, um, I guess I mean, if you started off blogging because you had something you needed to say, mm -hmm. at what point did you realize you had a readership? How did that develop? Well, I think that when I was looking to, I needed to stop writing about my sort of initial doom and gloom stuff. And so then I moved to just um, like a regular blog. And, um, you know, where it was just kind of a very standard mom blog, you know, oh my God, the PTA lady, I don't know what you call PTA there, but the parent association mom is driving me crazy. Let me tell you about her and her yoga pants, you know, like very kind of snarky stuff. And that was actually still anonymous. And then you just see that your readership is growing. You can see it. Um, I would use some tools like Stat Counter. And, um, and then I started getting the publicist kind of requests. And after a while, I was like, oh, this is definitely a job. And I'm not sure exactly where that happened. But I started seeing folks around me were making money. And then I started writing for some other sites. And um, in the earliest years, these sites were paying very, very well. I'm not sure how, it, do you guys use CPM there? Yes, we do. OK. So we were getting $20 CPMs per a um, ad placement. So I was, as a writer, getting a $20 plus CPM on sites that I didn't own. So I learned to write some very provocative stuff. I, I would write for the green websites, and I would write about things like, you know, that there were shades of green. Because um, when I was doing my green writing, there wasn't anybody that was very moderate. And I was very moderate. Like I, um, I was like, you know, organic when you can do it, but sometimes you gotta like you know, go grab an apple that's probably coated in pesticides, you know. And that would trigger outrage in the community, and outrage brings page views. So um, that was when I sort of discovered that, you know, that that was, that was where my, my income was going to come from. And I, and I worked for some great editors. I worked for a lady named Jennifer Lance who... Um, just challenged me to be better at all times. I mean, if you have the opportunity to work for an editor, even if you're working dirt cheap and they're good, it's uh, there's so much value in that. And, and then I worked for National Lampoon, which taught me to be funny. Like, I always thought I was funny, but they were like, no, you're actually not that funny. <laughs> and um, and I learned how to be funny, and and it's good because the other thing is is that if you're going to say things that are outrageous and are going to uh, upset people, you need to have a sense of humor. You can really you can say crazy stuff um, if you say it with some humor. Sorry, oh, I'm just getting distracted by all these wonderful tweets coming in. Um, okay, um, so we've also had quite a few questions about how you started working with brands. Mm -hmm. 
what was your first experience with that? How did it come to come about? Oh my goodness. I Well, I, I know it's something first, you've done quite a lot of, yes. I have done a lot of it. Um I don't know. I you know what we uh I can just tell you like an early experience has sure. been, you know, just go, early experiences were just kind of like going to hosted parties and stuff and I didn't see huge value in that. Like I was like, oh, okay, well I went to a few and that was really nice. Then it was like, but you know, I don't actually want to go to a party, you know. <laughs> like the whole point was that I was going to be with my family and then, you know, the they would send stuff and I would kind of review and enjoy it and we had then the some events started happening with my kids when I started saying no to the part I started saying no to the things that didn't match all of a sudden things that did match started coming so like my daughter got to go see like a Jonas Brothers concert that she was very interested in you know so many many years ago um, and to take some little trips with with some of the brands uh, but more importantly, for my bottom line, um, was the sponsored posts. And as um, startups particularly were um, looking for some exposure and they were looking to meet my community, I would just get a flat fee for sharing their information on my site and, and just storytell it uh, as opposed to, you know, interviewing or whatever. And to just be able to say, hey, there's this new startup and it came about because and here's how it works in my life kind of thing. And have you been very, um, since you've become better established, have you done very much flipping the tables on that where you're going after brand that you want to work with? Um, only the car companies. I have a problem with cars is that I love them all so much. Um, so I I treat my automotive reviews like journalism where I don't I don't have a financial relationship with them but I do borrow cars so um, they'll lend me a car for usually a week and sometimes a little bit longer and I'll, and I'll come after them and say oh my god I just saw you have this that or the other can I drive it um, and then I do I haven't gone after a whole bunch lately I, I wouldn't say but but I have in the past sometimes sometimes when I have something coming up like when I hit 20,000 um, I did a fun thing when I hit 20,000 Twitter followers I spent a day an entire day doing giveaways on Twitter and so I contacted every brand that had ever like pitched me that year and I was like do you have product that you'd like me to give away or would you like to sponsor the day and that was it was a really interesting experience being on the other side of the table there and it made me really cool. much more yeah. patient with the um, with the folks who have to pitch all day um, so st for following up again on working with brands getting a lot of questions in about that sure um, asking about um, let's see um, what is this? What is your um, kind of division of income that you earn from blogging? Um, where does most of it come from? Um, you know, it's funny because it's going to change, but like last year, I would say that it was probably maybe sixty percent from banner ads and forty percent from sponsorships. And I, what happened? towards the end of the year for me was that I had my ad servers went down for a little bit and so they were sluggish or something so I, I took all the ads down and during that time somebody had talked to me about a sponsored um, post or series of posts and they were like oh and we noticed you had no ads so will you be charging a premium and I was like uh, yeah of course I will like I had that planned right um, but I found that and this goes back to being totally respectful of my community and the advertiser was that okay if I can take the, the some of the banner ads off or if I can guarantee exclusivity for even four or five days that that will be on my home page 
then I can charge a little bit more for the sponsored posts. So I'm playing with that for 2013 and the awesome thing about being a blogger as opposed to like a huge media conglomerate is if it doesn't work I'll go back to what did work. Um, so I, I'm not sure mm -hmm. that I won't have do, a different you... answer soon. And um, do you, with your um, banner ads and sponsorships, do you manage that yourself or do you outsource it? I outsource that. I, you know what, you can, uh, I, as, um, as a small business owner, I figure out what I'm good at and I do that and then I take all the stuff that I'm not good at and I find people who are good at it and I hire them. That's a great answer. Uh, let's see, um, another question coming in is, um, how do you see the role of blogger brand ambassadors? Um, do you think it's a growing influential group out there in the corporate world? I do. It was so crazy. Kind of when it started out, I was like, who are these people and what are they doing? Um, but it seems to be a model that's really beneficial for, um, for both sides and for our audience too. What about, um, coming back to your experience working with brands, um, is there a particular brand or possibly even a celebrity that would be kind of a dream for you to work with? Any, any favorite candidates out there? Um, no. I got I to gotta dream bigger, I guess, huh? I haven't really thought about that. Well, how about um, the flip side of that? Yeah, Sorry, I get ahead. I get excited about um, about new and upcoming stuff. Like I, I've I've really loved. I have a fantastic relationship with Procter and Gamble. Uh, I love the work that I've done with them, and it's just always been on target. But um, but I still get super super excited when I get a phone call from like four women who have just taken a gamble and created you know a community or an app or a product or something like that so I very I can get very excited from being around entrepreneurs and how um, how active is your community do you feel like you have a strong relationship with them I do and I don't my community is a really interesting community they're not commenters um, but they email and they DM me all the time. So I feel like like I have this conversation that we start on my blog and that we finish in like private messages. And it's and it's interesting. They're they're an interesting community. I think that my community may skew a little bit older sometimes. Uh, well, um, it's a fun one. Have you ever had a creepy experience with uh, an, what is that? Um, a w from a fan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, yes. I, 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 boy. <laughs> yes, more than one. And I've had really unpleasant experiences with, um, people who have just put me in their crosshairs and that's um, I'll talk about that too because there's an Oprah story in there just by the way so I'll talk about that another time <laughs> I promise looking forward to hearing that one um, well coming back to you as um, as, as a parenting blogger mm -hmm. um, you know I mean, the, the term mummy blogger in Australia is highly debated um, mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about um, your opinions on that yeah, I, I'm i not a great feminist because I don't get like, like I, I use the word, I, I you know, because the problem is, is that when, when folks want to reach the moms, they're going to search for a mommy blogger. And so I'm like, okay, so find me. But then, on the other hand, when I'm sitting in an office, and this has happened repeatedly, so I apologize now for being part of the problem, 
and they're like, oh, we want to, you know, we love that you're a mommy blogger. And it's such a diminutive term that I just kind of like cringe and I'm like, oh no. Um, and I want to say to them, listen, don't call me mommy if you're not my kid. But on the other hand, I want to say to them, yeah, but also give me your money. So we've kind of put ourselves in a funky place where, you know, the, the brands are searching for mommy bloggers. So by all means, I'm a mommy blogger, but also don't call me one. And I don't have a good answer to that. I don't identify most places as one. I, 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 um, but by default, that's who I am. I'm a mom. I see the world through these like mom-colored glasses. Once you're mom, you can't undo that. And so it does change the way we see the world. Uh, how about coming back to your kids? Um, um, obviously, you've been blogging for most of their lives. Um, how, do they, how do they see your blog? <laughs> they, uh, they can't think of anything more boring. Um, and it really, actually, it was only, I think, I think a month ago that I used their picture for the first time. So I've tried to um, I've tried to keep it so that it's not I think that the experience of motherhood is much more interesting than my children and that we all have these very universal, very shared experiences. So I try and draw on those. And and the other thing is is that as women we we definitely we talk about our children and our husbands and our dogs and our cats and everything but ourselves for most of our days because that's sort of our condition um, in particularly in early motherhood in the er, in the earliest years and so as a blogger I'm kind of like yeah, let's talk about ourselves because we're really interesting we're these dynamic interesting women with loads of talent let's talk about that part of things so I, I've left a lot of my kids out of it, I hope. And what about um, connecting with other bloggers? In, in Australia, the, we've got a really strong blogging community, but a lot of bloggers say that um, in more regional areas it's harder to meet you know, face to face with other bloggers. Um, what's the blogging community like in LA or in the US in general? Well, I, I can't speak for the whole U.S. because we're, like you, massive. But in we have a, a thing called Social Media Club. And so in around L.A., New York, um, parts of Texas, most of our big cities, you're going to find a pretty vibrant community. And like I could be out every single night of the week going to panels, going to parties, networking events, and they all have value. Um, I don't know what it would be like to live in a more rural area. I meet those women at conferences and stuff, and that's the only time they'll meet them because you know they live three hours from an airport and then it's a five hour flight to wherever. So I imagine that that's really more challenging for them but um but we have great communities that have popped up and they're kind of quirky and so they they each of the communities kind of represents the area that they're in. I think we've been getting lots of other questions that are um, a little more specific about, like you know, um, your role um, uh, um, as an activist and with health, the health community. Um, I think we'll. Leave, I think it's best to leave that in the interest of time um, for your presentation at Hellevate, um in March. Um, and I think we're about out of time on this. Um, I just get any closing thoughts from you, and then we'll turn back over to Kathy. Well, thank you, Jess. That was awesome. It was really great to hear about uh, your community and your experiences, and we'll look forward to hearing more at Health Aid in March. Just before everyone goes, I've got a quick slide on a special offer. Um, anyone um, on this call, this webinar call, between now and tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m., we have a special Nafnang only ticket price of $135, which is 10% off the rate. 
And the thing I really wanted to share with you, which it almost may, you know, it's almost like buying your groceries for a week. Every blogger who t attends Health of Eight will get a week's supply of macro foods from Woolworths. So um, there's quite a goodie bag to take away with you. But again, thank you, Jessica, and um, we look forward to welcoming you down under in March. Thank you. I'm excited. Great. Well, thank you again, Jessica, and uh, thank you everyone else who joined us on the call today. Hope to see you at Health of Eight this, uh, this March.